Aloha, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, we've got, I love, we've had people writing us in with some of their ukulele news. Uh, for those of you that don't know, you'll hear more about it in our ukulele news roundup. Um, but welcome, everybody. I see people from all over the world, which is super exciting. So uh, thank you all so much for always being so supportive of the stuff that we do. Um, and we've got, I don't know, there's just, there's so much <laughs> that we've got going on. So um, this week we've had a bunch of fun meetings. Craig and I have been incredibly fortunate um, to be meeting with uh, folks now that we have our uh, 501c3 status. We can actually really get to work on some of the programs and things that we're going to be doing. Some things are like still in the work, so we can't go public with everything just yet. Uh, so I think next month we'll actually be able to tell you guys more about the four strings at a time programming. Um, and don't, yeah, there's so much stuff. So we're super, super excited. Um, let's see. So we've got what, like we're now at the 15 minute mark, I think, or just, just under for when our live stream starts. So should we, should we start our ukulele news roundup, Craig, or do you want to give it a couple minutes? We'll, we'll start in about three minutes. Okay. okay, you just give me a high sign, mm -hmm. and I'll I'll switch gears. But aloha, everybody, again. So fun seeing everybody in the chat. Make sure also, FYI, to, that you have it set on live chat and not just top chat, because you're going to end up missing something or something's going to be out of order. So just FYI, if you are watching and you're like, chat, what chat? You have to sign into YouTube, your YouTube account. It's a free thing, um, but you have to be subscribed to our channel in order to be able to ask us questions uh, live in the chat. And that's really just to stop all the spamming bots and stuff. Because if you have it to not subscribers, like crazy things can happen that aren't really that great. So that's why we have it set to subscribers only. Um, yes, you can still purchase packets. People were asking about that earlier in the in the chat. Just go to our website, craigandsarah.com slash live. And uh, you should be able to see that the packets are there. We do show everything on screen. Um, so you don't technically have to buy a packet, but if you do, thank you. We appreciate your support because it allows us to keep all of this free, which is something that we've been doing since I realized 2018. We've been doing these live streams since 2018. It started uh, with our artist work students. We wanted to do something special for them. So it used to be that we would ask them what they wanted to learn, and then we would turn around and create a lesson uh, once a month and do these live streams for them. And then we said, you know, wouldn't it be nice to like other people could watch, but the artist work students still were the ones that chose, <sighs> bless you, we're still the ones that chose the subject matter. And then of course, 2020 happened and we changed our formatting a little bit and just made it so it's like everything, everything is for everybody. Um, so yes, uh, so many, I also love seeing so many uh, familiar names uh, in the chat, I see Busy Carol is already working hard. Thank you so much, Carol. We really appreciate you, all the all the help you do uh, for us. So thank you so much. And then I see our friend Eline is in the chat all the way from Brazil. Please give Jennifer a huge hug from us. Uh, you guys are so awesome. I wish we had had more time to spend together in LA. You'll just have to come to Hawaii, I guess, and that way we can see you. <laughs> Or we could go to Brazil too, but I mean, you know, who doesn't want to come to Hawaii, right? Ah, uh, I love it. And then, oh, some people, oh, Vermont, that does sound very cold. I guess I shouldn't talk about how cold I was this morning. It's been cold in Hawaii. Our, our, <laughs> our balmy 66, not balmy, but yeah, yeah, that 66, the thing actually that makes today feel cold is the wind. The mm. gusts of wind are so, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so, but yeah, we shouldn't complain. <sighs> oh no, Mitchell, your printer's not working. I'm sorry. That's super sad. Yeah. That's always one of those things that whatever you're doing workshop stuff, I tend to like to be able to write stuff down, right? Like I like pen and paper. Yes, I have a fancy iPad and a pencil, but we all know that that's because of Mr. Chi. I definitely, um, my dad used to call me a Luddite. So like, that kind of shows you how 
how not technologically advanced I was when oh, Craig and I first met. We have the most amazing Chris Fuchigami in the chat. Chris Fuchigami! Oh Great my gosh. to see you, buddy. Give your mom a huge hug from us. <laughs> yes. Aw, yeah. I can't believe you're joining. Thanks, Chris. If you don't, if you guys don't know who Chris is, go click on his name or, or search for him, mm -hmm. subscribe to his YouTube channel, yeah. fantastic player, fantastic performer. We featured him on our backyard concert uh, last, yeah. this past season. Fantastic. And we, we have some actually ideas, Chris, for uh, for a bunch of, of artists that yes. we'll, we'll, re we'll be reaching out soon. <laughs> that's, that's, it's kind of nice to see. And How kind of... fortuitous, yes. <laughs> that's so cool. Awesome, well, let's get started with the news then. All right. It's time for our ukulele news roundup. So uh, what we mentioned last time is, I wanted to mention it one more time. We have got some ukulele cruises on the radar, y'all. So there you go, whoop, this hand. The ukulele cruises over here, you can see there's one actually happening in 2024. Um, it is a Hawaii one. And one thing I do wanna mention about this is if you do go on this one, there's a special excursion where you get to hang out with us for a little bit on the island, so just FYI. Um, and then of course there is the Caribbean cruise that is in 2025 with Matt Stead that you could totally check out. It looks like a really fun one. So just FYI, two ukulele cruises, one this year, one next year, and of course, our ukulele cruise. And look, there's someone new added to the photo <laughs> that's a whole ray of sunshine. It is gonna be Mr. Herb Ota Jr. joining us. I cannot wait to be trapped with him on a boat for seven days. That's gonna be fantastic. It He's is. never been on a cruise before. He's so. never been on a cruise. So everybody who joins us, you know, make sure to, <laughs> you know, help him feel welcomed on the ship. We are, we have confirmed the June 20th, 2025 sailing date. We are going to be with Celebrity Cruises. We are still not accepting deposits yet, y'all. You're just gonna to need to put your name on our email list for now. Um, deposits we're gonna be able to do, we need to make it through the March retreat, you guys. And then I have a feeling that it's gonna bust open. Um, we ha will have workshop spaces on board, but that does mean that we will have a cap on how many people can join us because we will have limited space for classrooms on a boat. So there's that. And then Craig and Sarah News, we got these new really fun stickers. I'm super excited. They're like, oh, so, they're upside down. They're super <laughs> nice. But I love the, these sparkly ones, uh, $5 of, uh, of that goes to the nonprofit Four Strings at a Time. We've had multiple people already start purchasing those. These pennant ones are really fun. Um, also, if you buy a string set from us, you get to choose a free sticker to go with it. So if you need new strings, visit our website. March 16th, we have got Neil Chin joining us. Very excited about that. March 23rd, there's a double workshop happening with um, the Twin City Ukulele Club. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring it. And then May 10th through 12th, we're gonna be, it might be our only mainland gig. So Mighty Uke Day, come join us. Nice. And then I am super excited. There's a new album. Many of you out there know it because you're on this album. How cool is this project? James Hill decided, I don't just want to make an album by myself. I want my <laughs> friends and all my fans to join me. And so this really awesome album, I think it came out yesterday. So it's brand spanking new. Um, it's taken two years to, of rehearsals, almost two years of rehearsals. It says 165 people, 13 songs, 10 rehearsals, this giant group project. Check it out at ukeheads.com. It's such a cool project and uh, just congratulations James and everybody yes, absolutely amazing how amazing is that we, we were we were we were invited to, to be a part of it and it was we just had no time it, I know it, I'm so sorry so... James I'm sorry James I'm sorry everybody but we have our own we are you kids too because we actually have our own uh our own stuff for it but we just you guys know we've been very busy but yes but congratulations congrats. to all of you guys congratulations to uh, to uh, James and Anne, uh, yep. just absolutely amazing work, and we can't wait to hear the full album. Dude, yeah, and I love, one thing that I've always appreciated about James is he's definitely a community builder, and uh, this is just like a culmination of years of just building up a community. So, next up, we actually have a guest in studio, super excited, our friend Sean Iacovone. All right, aloha. Thank aloha. You. aloha. So he's been working on a really cool project. Um, and instead of me, you know, 
going on about it. Let's actually have you talk about it. So tell us about the cool projects you've been doing with the archives. Sure. Uh, there's a new initiative. It's called the Hawaiian Music Archives at the Hawaii State Archives. Cool. And what this is, is, is that it's the largest, actually, repository of recorded Hawaiian music in the world. Wow. Um, there are tens of thousands of sheet music, uh, methodology books, mm -hmm. new and old. Uh, there's about 250 ukulele, all kinds of ukulele ephemera. As you know, the Hawaii State Archives is the public trust. And so this, uh, the vision really is to make this accessible to everyone in the community. And so um, many of the things are also available online at the digital platform, too, for the Hawaii State Archives. Oh, so cool. many of these things are being scanned and uploaded. Of course, if it's uh, copyright protected, you would have to come in and listen and see those things. But, uh, but uh, there are many things that are also available online. Mm -hmm. um, the wonderful thing about this project is, is that it's a community-based project. Mm -hmm. Because as we all know, the ukulele um, is a community-based instrument. It was created as a community of people. Yeah. And so what we're looking at is modeling that and and, uh, and, and championing this effort as a community-based effort. And so wow. there are different ways that people can, can participate. Yeah. Uh, we're actually not in a position uh, uh, to be able to, to take any uh, financial donations at this time. We're working through some of those things. There is going to be a need um, because there are things like conservatory things that we need to do, funds we need for uh, repairing the instruments and maintenance. We're mm -hmm. also... Um, you know, acquiring a period-specific string. So everything pre-1946, any of the ukuleles that are in there, true gut strings. Wow. 1947 to about 2000, we're going to be using nylon in those instruments, and post that, will likely more contemporary fluorocarbon, nylon gut, things of wow. that sort. We want to allow people an opportunity to be able to play, touch, hear uh, uh, history in a different way. Yeah. Uh, we're also in the process of ordering a sound booth, um, and that will fit about two or three people. Uh, and so uh, it's not available quite yet, but once this happens, which is kind of be, going to be within the next couple of months, people will be able to come into the archives. You only need a government-issued ID. There's no cost. Wow. Weekdays, 9 to 3 o'clock, you can call down a vintage Martin 5K from the 1920s or 30s, strung up with gut strings, wow. be able to listen and play on some of these instruments and so forth. We're working through the protocols and setting those things up. Uh, but aside from financial donations uh, for conservatory things, acquisitions, uh, mm -hmm. not everything is donated there. Some things are purchased uh, but, and some things are on loan. Uh, but, um, but we are in, in need, and this is one of the things that you know, I'd like to ask your viewers as well. Mm -hmm. We're really in need uh, and partnering with you folks uh, to, to have all things ukulele sent there. Uh, when we think of ukulele history, we think of the 1800, late 1800s, we think of early 1900s, we think of all these yeah. amazing things that are happening. Absolutely true. But ukulele history is actually happening today, you yeah. know, and so we um, whether it's a new ukulele, an old ukulele, uh, a, 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 an ukulele made overseas or made in Hawaii, new strings, old strings, new methodology books, old methodology books, yeah. all of that is part of the story. Even marketing materials. We are gathering marketing materials, wow. um, molds for building instruments. All of those types of things are coming in wow. and there are uh, and it will be accessible to the community. Wow, that is an amazing project, and it just—I can't imagine the hours <laughs> that have <laughs> that have already been put into it, but the hours more that will be put into this really, truly amazing project. Well, we're really excited. Once again, this is community-based, and so we're happy and excited to be partnering with with you, Sarah and Craig. Yeah. Um, you know, Jake is is uh, has uh, lent his hand of support, and Herb, and so many other amazing musicians. We had a wonderful meeting with James Hill and others, but there are also yep. giants in the in the guitar industry that are supporting us too. We're working closely with Martin Guitars. Yes. We had a fantastic meeting with Chris Martin and his team, mm -hmm. and they are also supportive of this initiative as well. And so really it's, it's a way for us to do two things in my mind. One, to look back and celebrate all of those that came before us. Yeah. All of the history, right? Whether you are a musician, whether you're a builder, whether you are a, a, a manufacturer, there's a place for us to celebrate our kupuna and the other thing that really interests me is is that we can perpetuate the long-standing the rich cultural history of of uh, music in hawaii and so we can ensure that 100 years from now 200 years from now that people uh, can look back at this time and say what was happening in ukulele history and 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 how can we learn from that time period and so it's both educational and reflective uh you know in that way 
Wow. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to come by and hang out thank with you. us and thank tell you. us about this really awesome project. So just those of you guys at home, um, we, well, we're going to put an email and stuff up on screen in just a couple minutes. Uh, basically, if you have instruments that you want to donate or sheet music, musical recordings, photographs or videos, advertising catalogs, etc., you can go to... Oop, here it is, musicarchives at hawaii.gov. Please email, uh, chat with them if you've got uh, some things that you would like to donate because this is a really cool initiative. There's even more coming. Um, and Craig and I had the opportunity, this photo that you see actually that's up is from when we had that chance to, uh, to visit archives and we got to play instruments and there's just, there's a treasure trove. So it's very exciting. Thank you so much, Sean, again, for coming and chatting with us about that. Super, super, super exciting stuff coming up. Also, Ukulele News Roundup. We asked you folks about uh, submitting things to us, and we had a couple folks write back to us saying, hey, the Sonoma Ukulele Club, it meets the first and third Tuesday of the month. If you live in Sonoma, California, definitely go check it out, Vintage House Senior Center. There is a phone number there for Vintage House. If you would like to join in or want more information, that phone number is up on the screen. And then there's also the Beach Combers Ukulele Club. You can meet them every Tuesday. If you are in the Sunshine Coast, British Columbia, Canada area, not Sunshine Coast, Australia, that's always my first go to. But if you are up in uh, British Columbia, in Canada, you can go hang out with those, that really, really fun group. Mark is always so sweet. You'll see his email address is also written up on screen. Just send him an email and you can learn more about them. Also, folks out there, you want us to talk about your news, definitely take a moment, send us an email. We will put it up on screen and let people know about club meetings, festivals, whatever's going on out there. Um, we're trying to find a way to just be uh, communicating what's happening. And Craig and I don't know everything, so we rely on you guys to help us with that. So thank you guys so much. We made it through all of the ukulele news. Mm -hmm. Woo! Nice. Okay. Hey, oh, somebody's noticing the beautiful ukulele behind me. Yes, there's multiple instruments behind me of various um, brands. You might notice that, so the this one is the Wayfinder. That one's eventually going to be making its way, I think, to the Midwest. And then we have a uh, Kanile, uh, I think that's Anue Anue, this guy here. One of the loudest instruments I have ever played in my life. If you want to like rock out at your ukulele club and be the loudest and proudest, I'm telling you, that's Bruce Top. I knew I knew it is the way to go. We'll be doing some um, sound samples for students uh, yes. who had questions about different brands and whatnot. So we're going to do a, a bunch of different um, sound samples and showcasing mm -hmm. the characteristic differences. And yeah. And then we have another Kanilea behind us. This is a super special one that was gifted to us from the 20th anniversary concert that we were a part of at Hawaii Theater. So that's, oh, and then there's also, I think that's a Kamaka right there that was Craig's uh, gift to him when he was a uh, senior in high school. So we have a bunch of brands back here because <laughs> just like you guys, we have a little bit of UAS. <laughs> so we have a bunch of instruments. <laughs> okay, aloha. Are you lonesome tonight? We're going to be working on some chord melody, but I figured to warm us up, we'll just go through and play through the song. Um, I don't always sing it the same way twice, y'all. Sorry. So I'm going to be singing the melody all over the place as we go through and play it. Um, actually, I'm going to also double check my tuning because now that the room has settled, it's probably changed since when I first tuned it. So this song, you'll see that there is something up there that says 3-4, right? That means we are in 3-4 time. Each box represents three beats, okay? Usually it represents four, because a lot of times we are in 4-4 four, four time, or also what's known as common time. So yes, 3-4 time, which means each chord listed is three beats, and um, you can definitely, ah, tuners. When they switch to the other tunings, it's always a little nutty. Okay, so let's just play and have a good time. Um, play the chords however you want. <laughs> I'm not going to be judging your fingers right now um, just because we've got a lot of things we're going to be covering with this tune. Okay. 
So one, two, three, one, two. Are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? Are you sorry we drifted apart? So sad. Does your memory stray to a bright, bright should be bright sunny day when I kissed you and called you sweetheart? Do the chairs in your parlor seem empty and bare? Do you gaze? your window and picture me there is your heart full of pain sorry will you come back again tell me dear are you lonesome tonight cue the tears oh so sad this song is so funny you know, there's many, many famous versions of it. And did you know that this song is actually a public domain song? <laughs> it's a pretty old tune. You probably could have uh, figured that out by the word parlor. But <laughs> um, but Elvis, of course, does one of the most famous versions of it. And then he does this, like, weird talking in the middle of it. The curtain, the curtain this and that. I, yeah. Anyway, so this tune is the one that we're going to be working on today. And... The goal of this workshop is to be able is to be able to get you to start thinking about doing your own arrangements, and you can make it as hard or simple as you want. Today, during the live stream, I am gearing this towards high G. Okay, um, <laughs> Craig. Yes, today is Team High G. <laughs> okay, or or this one, uh, a Team High G. But um, I do have a. Um, a low G arrangement of this in this packet. So low G folks, I did do do that, but I am gonna be geared toward high G today. Um, I'll talk a very, very, very briefly about like what you could do on your low G. Um, but anyway, so moving forward, I'm gonna go, first thing I'm gonna mention is, okay, chord melody. Oh wait, that was this page. Chord melody. <laughs> so there's a couple of rules that I tend to follow when I am putting together or teaching chord melody. And one of the biggest things is um, the melody note needs to be the highest note in pitch of your chord. Otherwise, um, if you, let's say our melody note for some, and it's, we have an F chord listed, right? But our melody note is actually this note, that F note happening there. That means that instead of strumming all the way like that, because you're, I'm going to do this and stop my strum so that I'm just hitting that note to end it. Okay. Now, the reason why is if I do this, you don't really notice the F note as much. Your ear's going to go to that thinking that's your melody versus now. Sometimes high G, you could strum backwards to get your melody note. And then that G really sticks out. We're gonna do some of that with the high G. So just FYI. Again, this is the last note you heard. It's the highest in the chord right now. So just FYI versus the F again. If that's my melody note, I stop my strum so that I just do that. Okay, the next thing that you're gonna run into is melody is king, okay? No matter what. So for example, if I am playing a song and it has an F chord listed, but my melody note needs to be this note happening here, I'm gonna do this, happening here on my third fret of my A string, I'm just gonna add that note. And there you go, my melody note is right here. Under my fingers, I'm holding an F chord. I am adding the melody note. Bam. I don't care what that chord is called. I just know it's F with a C note added. Those of you out there that are like, but I need to know what it's called. You really don't. You just need to know that you're adding a C note to your F chord. But I can tell you that this is just another way to play F that has two C's happening in it. Versus two A's. 
okay? <laughs> so um, a lot of times when you're adding in melody notes to chords, the technical chord name might change to like F, F major six or even minor chords, E minor seven or whatever. But the, the thing I want you to take away from this is don't get married to needing to know the name of every chord. If you're trying to learn the name of every single chord, you'll get really frustrated. Looking at it with an overall like broad strokes approach of it's a C chord, I need to add the melody notes. The melody notes are X, Y, and Z. And so I'm just thinking C, adding those notes, okay? That's to me, I had a lot of, um, what's it called? I had a lot of, I was that guy that was like, but I need to know the name when I first started playing. And it's it slowed me down. So, so just that's why it's like broad strokes, y'all, broad strokes. So you'll know also that there's many different ways you can play chord melody. You could do it a la Benny Chong, one of my absolute favorite ukulele players, where you are reharmonizing and playing chords for every single um, melody note. That's a lot of work. You can definitely do that. You could also do something uh, more in a Herb Ota Jr. style where you've got chords in there, but there's also arpeggiating and pick, different picking or st extra strumming happening. A lot of times he plays low G and that low G string is tend to use as a timing mechanism so that he can keep time with it. That's another way that you can do chord melody. There's multiple, multiple ways of doing it. So again, don't get married to, well, Sarah said I had to do this. First, I didn't say that. And then also, um, just again, keep in mind, there's multiple ways to do things and I'll kind of show you that. Everybody doing okay? Let's move on. Woo, I'm gonna move page three. One of the first things that I recommend doing is making yourself a chord bank. If you know what, so what chords are generally found in your song, then I created this handy dandy chart to go with my song. Now, you could do what I used to do, which is I had my Roy Sakuma treasury of ukulele chords, and every single chord, I'd flip through the book. <laughs> and it's like, that takes infinitely longer than just get all your chords sorted out, put them in a chart, and then get your music out and start, okay? So this is what I refer to as a chord bank. Um, if I need a chord, I could use these. Now you'll notice that I'm actually pulling from some chords potentially that aren't listed in my song. For example, instead of E minor, I might play E minor seven that's listed below it. Um, why might I do that? Well, E minor seven is easier to play and get to sometimes. So because of some of my own knowledge of chords, I know that a minor seven can sometimes play, replace a standard minor chord. Um, you might not know that already in your journey, but that's fine. You know, this is again with the class, I'm giving you some extra information. Also, you'll notice that F chord, I have a, fa a, a fancy pants named thing under it that's even easier than playing a regular F. It's an F add nine. And in fact, for certain parts of the song, I think it sounds better. So I, sometimes you'll see me use that in our tune. Um, and then of course I have, you'll notice in the C uh, column, the first column, I have you know, this C written. I have this C written with an open G string, which isn't gonna sound as good on low G, which is why I have boop, this one where I'm covering all the strings. And then I also have C major seven there as well. I should have also put C major six too, but you know, you get the idea. So again, I just have this handy dandy chord bank here so that you don't have to like flip through a book constantly. So. That's what this is. And then the other thing that I also kind of did too is originally when I used to make my own chord banks, I would do all four uh, positions, but I didn't do that because we're not gonna go that high up on our fretboard for some of these. So that's also why I don't have all of the positions written like I might've, you know, when I was first starting out. Okay, let's take a look at the first couple lines of our tune. Now, Generally, I would actually go through and play just the single note melody to kind of figure out where things are um, to start with. But for the sake of this class, I'm just gonna have us kind of look at, um, look at this piece and kind of go through. So if I was just playing only the melody, are you, it would be that open E and then the E and then the G, excuse me. 
If you play low G, anytime there's an open G string, you're just gonna play the third fret of your um, E string, okay? So whether it's E, G, or E, this G note, it doesn't matter to me, okay? Now, for the melody, and again, I'm only gonna pick single notes here, and this, um, here we go, so I have are you, and then only the A string for right now. Lonesome tonight. Are you lonesome tonight? And then I'll just continue it just so you hear it. Are you so sorry we drifted apart? Excuse me. Sometimes when I sing it, I'll stay on that F note. Okay, so that's just the basics of the melody itself. Now let's start by just adding a chord to the very first notes there. So I have my E, G, and then C chord is what's listed in the music. Luckily, my melody note happens to be that third fret. Lone, and then I just add my second finger, single note, some, two, and then it switches to E minor and it just so happens my melody note is that B note in my E minor chord, so I can strum through the whole chord. Night. Now, I need to kind of lift things up and do that open E, G, and then A minor is the chord listed, but oh, look, my melody note, I'm adding this second fret here on the A string. So again, A minor is listed, melody note is the second fret of the A string, so I just add it. That's all I'm doing. Miss, and then lift up that finger. And I tend to hold that A minor because I know A minor is gonna show up again in the next measure. So open A, me, add that finger back, two, and then A minor again, night. Now you'll notice I was moving my hand out of the way and looking really awkward with my hand position. That's so you can see what's happening. I'm not gonna play it in this very strange hand position. So let me do that first line again. Here we go. Are you lonesome tonight? Do you, and then again, I've got these two guys, miss me tonight. Are you, are you starting to hear the song? Are you hearing the song? So, okay, let's keep going. The word sorry. Open A is our melody note. A C is listed. So instead of holding C, I'm just gonna take away that finger and strum all open strings. How easy is that? Super, super easy. And you'll notice that I wrote, um, wrote, wrote on there, right over there, C with an asterisk. That's just me saying it's technically not a C chord. It's a, technically for those of you that wanna know the name, it's a C6. But again, it doesn't matter. It's a C chord with A note listed. So, sorry, A string open, we, we. And then a C7 chord, the melody note happens to be right here on our first fret. Oh no, I lied, yeah. Yeah, it should actually be the G note. I am very sorry. So, let me go back like this real quick. So, we have our first case of um, strumming up for our low G people. Um, you can also just play the, this um, C chord, right? But have your ring finger over on the third fret. So the rest of you who have high G, <laughs> you're gonna strum up and put more emphasis on that G string. So again, going back to my close up, I am going to do second line. Open A, G string, open A, and then strumming up to that G. Drift, and then index, did, uh, and then it's an open A string for my melody, so I'm gonna hold an F and strum. Okay, now, everybody sings this part different. <laughs> I sing, tend to sing it differently too. So if you decide you don't wanna play the melody of how I have it done, that's fine. It's your interpretation of the song. I grabbed this uh, melody line from some sheet, from sheet music, because I always try to kind of find the source first. So 
Let's do that second line real quick one more time before we make things extra fancy. So open strings. Sorry. Open A, we strum up, drift, index on the E string, did, uh, and then part, open A. Okay, I'm gonna play through the two lines real quick before we move on to the next set of lines. Did you guys see any questions in the chat? I haven't seen the oh, questions in the chat because because I have been busy just <laughs> moving full steam ahead. Okay, so here we go. Are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? Are you sorry we drifted apart? Yeah, nice. Not too bad, right? It's not too bad. Um, and you can kind of start hearing the song and we're doing some chords and some picking, you know. So what I've done on the second line is I've given us options. I might not necessarily play it this way. Some parts of it I would play this way, some parts not. And I'll discuss that and draw on the iPad a little bit. Um, so anyway, you'll notice that I am adding some more chords to our party. And the reason for that is if well, first of all, why not? I want to add more fullness to it. But if I have places like, for example, this guy here, that's a beat and a half of just like sustain. So why not just play the chord there? And then you'll be set because you'll see here, there's this little line there. That's a, that's a um, not sustain, sorry. That's a tied note, meaning that that note's supposed to continue. So keep that in mind also when you are doing your chord melody is that if there's a note happening for a long period of time, like a quarter note, a half note, whatever, you have time to play a chord there probably. Um, and then of course, if there's a eighth note or 16th note, I might just pick that. And that's what I'm actually gonna be doing uh, for this. So just some things when you're first starting out with chord melody, quarter notes, try to play or one beat, try to play a full chord. Um, but if there's eighth notes, you can you could choose either, but it's sometimes safe to just pick the notes if it's a shorter duration, okay? Looking at this one, I'm gonna go through, some of it's the same, and it's gonna be <gasps> open E. So again, I am right here on my page. I'll just scoot up so that there's no confusion about where I'm at. Open E, are you, and notice I already have the C chord prepped, because why not? And then lonesome to, and then I could actually bring my ring finger down and hold this note here instead of going to our standard E minor. And I could play this chord instead, which I think is easier than going to this chord versus this chord. And then I'm already set up. I can leave this finger here, are you? And then add a finger for A minor. Do you miss me? Now, I would do this where I leave this finger here on that second fret. In the music, I just gave you the option. You could lift them everybody up if you wanted. But honestly, I'd probably play that guy so that I, I left that E minor there. So what's written initially was, are you lonesome tonight? Are you lonesome to, uh, sorry, to, except I'm playing a chord. It should just be the single note. I may end up actually playing the chord if I was doing this myself. So again, either way, measure that A minor measure, you could do, I could do where I'm just moving that the note which I would probably do but again I like showing options then continuing on are you sorry so this is gonna be the open now here I could do a strum if I wanted I chose not to just because I didn't want to do too much um, for this, but just FYI, I could do, and then strum up to my G, 
or I could do what's written. Open A, and then instead of doing a strum up, this is what the low Gs will end up doing, probably. You could do this, which I showed you earlier, for the word drift, or I can hold three, four, and three, and only strum down to the melody note, which is that G note, like that. And then the first fret, and then add that finger back and just strum. I like this here because it has a more open sound and it's a lot, you know what, y'all? It's a lot less work. <laughs> so just, that's why I might use F add nine there. So let me play that bottom line real quick. I have, uh, starting with are you, the pickup from the measure before. Are you sorry we, and then three, four, three, four, drift indexed apart. Nice. I love some people are like, I like that E minor seven sound. It is a lovely sound. Let me play through this. So here's another way that you could play the first two lines. Are you lonesome tonight? And the open E is already there. Are you, do you miss me tonight? Continuing, are you sorry we drift? apart. Nice. Great. It's not too bad, right? You know the basic chords. We're all staying in this first position area. I love team E minor seven, right? So FYI, I think we talked about this. We have a simplifying chords live stream actually that we did last year um, where I talk about, you know, chords that are tough to change to, or if you have hand issues, here are some substitutions. And this is one that is a brilliant one. Instead of playing a standard E minor, sometimes E minor seven sounds just as nice or better. There is a time and a place for that triad E minor, but it's not here today. <laughs> I like E minor seven more. So it makes the shifting and everything a lot easier. Um, and it just adds a bit more color. So FYI. Now, you remember in our song, G7 lasted a very, very, very long time when we were strumming it. And that's gonna make this next section so much easier <laughs> because you're just sitting on the same chord the whole time. You're definitely going to want to hold G7 pretty much this whole time. There's gonna be a little bit of movement with your you know, ring or adding your pinky, whatever you prefer. Um, for some of these melody notes, but you're just hanging out on G7 for a while. So melody-wise, we've got the do, does your memory of the do a bra, da, 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 I called you, sweetheart. That's this whole section. So let's do a close-up, and you'll notice that I have the chord diagrams actually written. If you see an X, um, like right here, written, that means you're not playing that string, okay? And then if you see these little O's, like right here, that means you will play that string, okay? Because it's just saying open string. So let's take a look and see what happens. I, you can do this, or you can do with your pinky. It does not matter to me. So I have my index, does your, and then put down your G7, but either scoot up or add a friend. Mem, bring your friend back. Maurice. So I probably would use my pinky for this. So again, does your, put everybody down. Memory strength, index A, oh sorry, index G. So I don't even need to lift up my fingers for that part. So again, starting with does your memory. Does your memory strength, stay there and just do the index and G right? Bright sunny day. Not too bad, right? Let's try that again. So you've got, does your memory stray to a bright sunny 
day. Now it's a little different. We gotta do a second fret, stays there, open E. But then you gotta put that finger right back down. You can put your ring down if you'd like, um, cause we're on, but I would recommend keeping it off and I'll show you why in a second. Play three strings, kissed, and then strum down, then strum up, cause our melody note is here. Kissed you, and that's a strum down. So you get three strums in here. So I've got down, up, down, and then add the third fret, called you. Take away the third fret, open G, and then three strings for your C. Are you hearing the song, right? You're starting to kind of hear the tune um, and you're just sitting on G7 and you're just changing the G7 slightly. You're adding a note here, it's G7 with an added note. It doesn't matter that you're playing a suspended, G7 suspended, who cares? You're doing this guy, or you've got that guy. You're, you know, G A, you're adding the nine. Woo, very exciting, right? Like. It doesn't matter. It's just G7 adding and taking away friends because the melody is king. It's the most important note. So you wanna make sure that that's the one that's shining and is the highest note in your chord. Okay, let's do it all together here. And then I'll play all the way through. So here we go. Does your, sorry, one more time. Let me actually get prepared this time. Here <laughs> two. Does your, to a bright sunny day. I messed up the timing, but that's okay. Do when I kissed you and called you sweetheart two, three, one, two. Now, I said during the word bright that I messed up the timing. The word bright should technically last a little longer. Again, I ended up playing it just like the first uh, measure, but, or not, yeah, the first measure of the memory. That's totally fine, you can do that. But there's one thing I wanna point out. Whenever I'm writing out a chord melody, I tend to write out, out in its most basic form, like what you have uh, uh, that we just played through. Now, I probably won't play it that way. What I may end up doing is something like this for this part. What am I doing? Well, I'm technically adding in some strumming to help me keep the time going. So I don't have to actually sit there and count, you know, one, two, three, and there's nothing happening. So I'm actually adding in some extra strumming. Now, the reason why I don't like to actually write that in my arrangements themselves is, is look down at the bottom. Look at how much more crowded and messy that looks. I have highlighted some extra strums that I've thrown in there and it's, I just, I personally, if I'm looking at, well, if I'm looking at an arrangement, I don't wanna see all of the extra fancy stuff um, just because for me, it's distracting to the melody. So that's why you won't see me when I write out chord melodies where I have all of the nuances written in um, because also you might change it. You might not play it exactly like that, right? So I just wanted to point that out is that, um, Oh, let's see, somebody asked a question. If you strum down with your thumb, which finger do you use for your, if you strum down with your thumb, which finger do you use for your up strum? So I tend to use my index because uh, I know I can really nail that melody note. Some people, like like Craig can actually strum up if he's, because he has the thumbnail and he can, he can strum up with his thumbnail too and be able to get melody notes that way. It's sort of whatever you think sounds best and has the best tone. Uh, so there's no right way to do it, but honestly, I would end up using my index for most of the song. I'm using my thumb for teaching purposes, but if I'm just playing around with it, uh, sorry. Look, I'm using my index.
And then also, after I've played the melody note of that C, I am strumming a standard C chord, but I'm strumming it more quietly. Because that's the other thing that happens when you're adding in extra strums and stuff. Play that much more quietly than your melody. Your melody needs to be the loudest part, the most important part of the song, right? So again, where I have at the bottom those highlighted strums, those are softer. If I was to play that line, and hopefully I, I play it <laughs> as, um, as written, um, if I did, Etc. right? You could hear how I made sure that those highlighted ones were softer. Let's try again. Okay, one more time. All right. Uh, ah, one more time. Etc. Etc. Okay. So for that, it's just food for thought, but I don't actually have that stuff written in my arrangements um, because I try to just get the essence of the song because I tend you're, you're going to end up playing it differently each time once you get more comfortable with this. And also, I can't believe we're actually seeing our friend Diane in the chat. I feel like we haven't seen you in ages. I know that you've been uh, dealing with a bunch of family stuff, but I'm so happy to see you, Diane. Thank you. I always love seeing your, your, your friendly face. So thank you guys. All right, moving forward with this. Whee! Our next section, I have two different ways that we could do it. Um, again, I'm using sort of my chord bank and going back and forth, kind of going, okay, this is the first time we're gonna kind of run into going up past the first three frets, y'all. So there's a reason, there's a method to this madness. One thing I do wanna point out that's hard to see on screen is the tiny little five. There's a tiny little five written there. That means fifth fret, okay? I'm gonna be jumping up to that D7 on the fifth fret during this section. So let's go through it nice and slow for just a hot minute, okay? So you've got open G string or reminder to the low G people, third fret of your E string. So I have do the C7 is the chord listed. Our melody note is that uh, first fret. So hooray, take off that note, G string, and then third fret uh, is the melody note and a C chord. So hooray again, parlor seam. Our melody note is the G note found in this F add nine chord, so strum up. So I get this note right here. Okay, then my index is the next note that I need, so and it's already down, hooray. And then three strings. Again, you know, I just, why add a finger if I don't need to, right? I could. Now, low G people. That might not sound as good for you. You may actually end up wanting to cover up that G string, um, just FYI. But for now, just play it how it's written. And I believe in the low G arrangement at the end of this packet, um, I did make it a regular F because I think that sounds better. You don't wanna necessarily have the nine be the lowest note in your chord, but that's for another day. All right, so continuing on. Um, do you, next line, we have a D7 chord listed. The melody note happens to be the third fret. Yay, it's a D7 we know and love. Then I need that second fret of the A string, so I just lift up that finger. And then, hey, that note's already there. It's already here if you play high G. Otherwise, you might have to reach for the A here. Sorry, not there, here on your E string. Or you might have to just open up and do an open A there. Either works fine. So again, that D7, gaze out your, then we're gonna go up to the fifth fret and add here, because our melody note is on this fifth fret, but I'm gonna strum through. Hey, that note's in my chord. If I play high G, it's already right there. 
right? So I have win, win, do, and not too bad. So let's do the D7s again, starting with that first D7. Gaze out your, move it up, win, do, and continuing on to a D minor, D minor with an open A. Pick Sure. I would lift up and actually do that open G string personally, um, but I could do um, the D minor and then add my pinky to the third fret of my E string. I could do that too. Um, if it's strum backwards with the open G, you have a nice full chord. That's, uh, yes, you are right, Craig. And I'll talk about that. In a, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yes, so... The, the D minor, well, again, that's jumping ahead of myself. So again, uh, let's do about that D minor, open G string if you're doing open G, and then the second fret, oh, sorry, two. That's an F sharp, and then a G7 strumming backward because the note is a G. Okay, let me play those two lines for us, and if you want to play along, you can, or you can just listen. So I have do the chair in your parlor seam and then strumming up empty and three strings bare do you gaze out your jump up window and D minor picture me So you can hear, you know, again, that lovely section there. Um, and then we can, some people might not like that jumping around. That's, I mean, a lot of jumping around, right? So you could potentially stay in one place and that's what this next one is about. So here we go. So let's look at this next one. And you'll notice that instead of jumping up to the fifth fret, you'll see that we are reaching for that note right here. And then technically we're playing a D major chord. Well, a D7 chord, D dominant seven is its technical name. That chord is comprised of a major chord with an extra fancy note in it, which is why it has the seven next to it. But you could replace it with a D major and it would sound okay. And that's what we're gonna end up doing down here. Now, the other thing I do wanna point out is something that Craig had said, which is, look at what I'm doing with this D minor. I've got an open G string already happening in it. I can. And if I wanted to, I could technically do, do a chord here and strum down to do it. So for picture, it could be picture and do that down and then, and here what I did is something that a low G person would probably do, which is instead of, see notice how that G7 has an asterisk next to it? Because I'm technically, look at my hand. I'm actually holding what should remind you more of G rather than G7 because the melody note I need is this. And I'm only strumming three strings. So that's what's, I don't even need this finger there, but for me, going ahead and having it under my fingers is a handy thing if I wanna like, Right? So if I did, I could do something like that where I actually play the full chord to help me keep time if I wanted, etc. So let's go through and play, and I'm gonna just play it as written. There's a couple of little things though that I have going on. Some of you at home might be like, I can't read that tiny little thing. This says P as in pull off, and P as in pull off, and P as in pull off, okay? because you got the skill set probably, so why not use it? So again, I have my index here, pull it off. Why not? And the next one, same thing, ring finger here, pull it off, add it back on. I could also make it a hammer on if I wanted, but I didn't do that to you, just pull it off. And then even in that F um, add nine measure, I have it here, where I've done this and then pull. And I have an open E string. And then I come back. So the pull-offs, the pull-offs that I have listed there 
I did it purely to remind you that you can add those things to your arrangement. You don't have to play it super, it's not static, but like it's very vanilla right now. And you can add in those things to help give it nuance, okay? Um, so that's why I wrote it there, just as a reminder. We've taught, we've taught you guys some of those things in past live streams. Here's some spots where you could potentially use it. So continuing on y'all, we're almost to the end of the song. Can you believe it? All right, here we go. Do the chairs in your, that C chord, parlor seem empty and bare? Do you, this part's gonna be different. Yay, second fret. This is the same, but now reach for your pinky for the word window. And I can actually play a chord here now because I've, I've, I'm already in place. I already have my bar there. So again, window, and then just reach for it. And D minor, but with an open G. Picture or picture. Then add the second fret, me, move it up and then add this guy there, or you can hold the whole G chord, but again, only strum through to the E string. Let's do it one more time. Here we go. Do the chairs in your parlor seem empty and bare? Do you get your stretch for it, window, and picture me there. Aww, very sweet. So, the idea behind this is not, can you play it along with me right now? Do you understand the concept of what I'm doing? Yes, I am moving quickly through the song because I'm showing you a concept. If your fingers can't wrap themselves around it yet, that's fine. That's what you practice. But this idea of the melody note is this, your chords are this. Add those melody notes to your chords, whether when you add the note, you are moving it up to the next position or you can alter the chord slightly so that then instead of this chord jumping, you could play this one and it's similar enough and you can do a little bit more. That's the point of this workshop. So if you're like, oh, I can't play it. Don't, that's, that comes with practice. But do you understand this idea, the concept of chord melody so that then you can go back and practice it and maybe even add and change things to how your ear likes it. Okay. So the melody as a top, uh, is the melody as a top note, a rule, a hard, fast one. Your melody note could be a single picked note, which means it's not at the top of anything. It's the only note being played. Um, but generally speaking, the way in teaching chord melody, it needs to be at least the first note heard by the listener. So if you're gonna be doing arpeggiating stuff, like in the style of Mr. Herb Ota Jr., he will nail that melody note before he does other stuff. Cause that melody note yeah, is super important. Or if you like important. do like a double stop. Um, or oh yeah. You, it, it's, it's part of is the control where mm -hmm. you can emphasize that melody note um, mm -hmm. and, and still have the harmony note that's there, but not as strong. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't try to take over. Right. That line, yeah. But generally speaking, the rule I tend to use is your melody note needs to be the <clears throat> highest note within your chord because you won't miss the melody if that's the case. <laughs> and then you can play the rest of the chord later um, after you have established the melody. So excellent question. Thank you for asking it. All right. <gasps> the end of the song is here, gang. Super excited about that. Okay, so here I went back and reverted back to the E minor just because I wanted to give you, again, what does that sound like when we're doing all this other stuff? I'd probably end up doing T E minor 7, but again, multiple ways to do things. 
So the beginning should look familiar. It should remind you of when we started the song. However, we have this jump up in our melody, which is fifth fret D7, still fifth fret D7, still fifth fret D7. So you've got some, some fun dancing happening there. And then you'll notice I threw in a first fret on the G string for that melody note instead of playing it on the fourth fret of the E string. So low G folks, it's gonna be the fourth fret of your G, of your E string, fourth fret E string, that same note here, okay? So um, there's that, just to keep in mind, and I'll tell you kind of why I decided to do that um, once we get moving. And then I have a D minor seven, well, it's just D minor with a friend added to the third fret, dear. Are you? And then we have a fun moving up with our G7. So we've, we're gonna end up doing something fun down here and using another position of G7 and another position of C. So let's go through super, super, super slow as I walk you through it, okay? So I have, is your C chord hard filled with, and then I switch to E minor for fun. <laughs> Should I, and then I've got to come up here, do my D7 up here on the fifth fret and then adding a finger to the seventh. Come, take that back away, back, pluck. You could do, you could, you could do if you want to do three strums there, but I tend to do. And then it's, you know, that guy right there, five, 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 six, five, five, five. And then I slide down my G string because I like hearing that dissonance of those two next to each other. And then my D minor seven. Second fret, open A, G seven here. I add my pinky or you could move your finger up and then scoot everything up. Craig refers to this as big G seven. Open five, three, five. Okay, again, high G folks, that open G string sounds great. And then I'm already kind of in place where all I need to do is my middle moves down, my index covers two strings, and I have that C that I have written there. Okay, if I play low G, I'm gonna end up, and you'll see it in the low G arrangement, doing a closed G7, which is four, five, three, five, and then a closed C, four, oh, sorry, uh, five, four, three, three, okay? And that is tabbed out for you in that low G arrangement. So let's go through this nice and slow. So we have, is your heart filled with pain? Shall I jump up here but add a friend to the seventh fret? Come. Index, uh, tell me, D, D minor seven. Are you lonesome tonight? Ooh, I love that. It sounds so nice. Yeah, this is actually, even though I have to admit like the lyrics and stuff of this song, I was telling Craig, I was like, I don't know about this guy. There's probably, there's, she probably had a real good reason to leave. I'm sorry, with this kind of thing. This, this feels like, what do we call it? Like drunk dial texting is how this kind of fe felt <laughs> lyrically. <laughs> um, but the melody is really sweet and really, really pretty. Um, and so again, there's many ways that you could do this, you know? Ah, I forget where I'm at. Uh, Right? I'm just noodling. I'm adding in stuff or just doing the... Or E minor. A minor. Et cetera, et cetera. It's like you can, you can add and noodle and do whatever you want with it. Um, but this is just one way or a couple of different ways of kind of getting you there. Um, I love that people are, are laughing about my comments about the lyrics. Yes, it's definitely, yeah. But 
Um, always keep in mind, I'm pretty much with anything with uh, music, is that there's multiple ways that you can do something. So don't get married to it. You know, I we tell people all the time, I can play my C chord four different ways. I can play it here, 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 or here. It depends on what chord comes before it or after it as to how I might do it. You noticed, I think in the section prior, I could play my G like this, where I, where I do this, right? Or I ended up doing this, where I'm holding it super different because it made sense in context with what I was doing. So again, definitely like, take a moment and you know see what works best for your hands now somebody yes craig i know definitely let us know in the comments if there's a trouble spot that you'd like sarah to go over yep um i can we and still then, have a few minutes um is there anything in uh can you talk did you talk about what's in the scholar packet for Not this yet. month okay but i'll get to that in a second so i love somebody saying can you do the finger picking tab that's the I don't do, when I, if I'm doing a tablature and I'm gonna be doing finger picking, I don't write in my picking pattern um, because it just looks so messy in my tablature and I, I lose sight of what my melody is. But I can tell you for what I just did just now was I was just spending time going in between my C and my E string. That's really all I was doing. So I did, uh, ah, let me actually, let me look at the, let me look at a, the melody and see what's going on. So I have a da, da. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just adding in this and I'm thinking of it as a constant. So just to start, there's more fun picking patterns than that. Um, but that's again, broad strokes, trying to always keep in mind the melody and to just adding in when I feel I can and keeping track of the time. Nice. When is the jazz? Oh, yes. Yeah, somebody's asking Diane, when is the jazz festival? So I guess there's going to be an ukulele, is it ukulele jazz festival, Diane. Uh, like we've done in the past with you, it was a ton, a ton of fun. It was a virtual event. So, ooh, right now she says she's aiming for late May. So just keep your eyes peeled, y'all. Now, real quick, I just want to, um, oh, what program do I use to write the music? Okay, so I actually use a couple of things. For actual writing out the music notation, I use Guitar Pro. And Guitar Pro, I can manipulate the chords and with the dots and all of that, right? But then I, use, I then use Canva to make the sheets themselves. So I export as a PNG, and that's how I'm able to manipulate things even more, do everything in Canva. Um, and then it's in notability right now <laughs> on my iPad so I can write on it. It wasn't that long ago where you didn't even have a smartphone. I'm, I'm so proud of you. Thanks, honey. <laughs> Thanks. You've, you've really pulled me kicking and screaming into this century. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> um, but uh, just FYI, in your packet, and I have a little note to our Logi people. I talked a bit about it. But um, I want to point out there's a boo-boo in my handout, okay? So I'm very sorry. Something happened in my translation of stuff where you'll notice that the measures that I have here, um, you need to fix and notice that the word we, it's an open A string. And then the C7, remember, we strum boop down to get the G note. And then uh, I, there's, I should have a one there, not a zero. And then there's a one on that E string for the word, uh, for a uh part. Okay. So make that notation for yourself. I'm sorry about that boo-boo. This is the high G arrangement of just going through stuff. Um, you'll notice that I just left the, the plain Jane chord names, even though whoop, right here, you're playing E minor seven, but I left the chord names plain Jane. Okay. Just so that again, that idea of it's an E minor chord and I'm adding the melody. All right, so that's two pages, the high G arrangement, same with low G. Low G had a similar boo-boo in it. So with this one though, the boo, what I wanna point out here is that it should be that three, four, three, okay? Three, four, three thing that we did earlier for that C7 is what I would actually end up doing. Or you could do this as well where you just have open strings too. And again, remembering that there's an A string happening on the Wii, 
and that there's the first fret here happening on that E string. So I'm sorry about that little boo-boo. I didn't catch it till after I was playing through everything, sitting here in front of a camera uh, as we were preparing to go live. So make those changes on your own to your sheet. And then I have everything all listed for low G here. So you can go through and play uh, low G arrangement. I did leave, like I did leave this guy here um, with that open, but you could also play this instead. Three. For that G7 if you wanted. Oh no, that's a standard G7. So this guy should be, ah, here we go, right here. So that's where that guy should be. That's right. I just have that G7 there for a pickup. Okay. Scholar packet people. So if you purchase a scholar packet, you are actually going to have access to a really fun song. Uh, it, I go through and I have to actually record the lesson for it. Um, hopefully I'll be able to record it today or tomorrow, um, but it'll be up very, very soon. I go through uh, the chord melody for a really fun so song called Honolulu, how do you do? And uh, it's just, it's such a, it's that Honolulu, how do you do? Honolulu, glad to see you. It's a, a cool, uh, not a kolu, keolu. <laughs> I'm like, a kolu is a number. Keolu is, uh, they were in our season one backyard concert and they performed it. It's such a fun song. And I go through a chord melody of that one uh, for the Scholar Packet. The Scholar Packet also includes backing tracks of not only um, Are You Lonesome Tonight at various speeds, but I also have backing tracks for Honolulu, How Do You Do? so that you can practice that one too. Although the backing tracks are downloadable so that you can, you know, put them on any device you want and walk around your house singing it or playing it or whatever it is that you'd like to do. So um, that is what is in that scholar packet. If you are like, wait, I want that and I bought the standard one, just send us an email, chimazel at gmail.com. We'll figure out a way to get it to you. No, you no problem. Your... Nope, I am not updating these packets. You just write in the, um, the notes. Uh, that's why I said, make a note of it. <laughs> uh, print it out or have it on your device and just uh, the, scribble it in. The, the not it yet, uh, I wasn't yeah. planning on it. I wasn't planning on doing a, a what you call with it. Um, but we can talk about it and see. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's like a three step process for any changes. So <laughs> I prefer not if I can help it. But we'll see. Um, maybe I'll be able to do that. But. Um, trying to, let's see if there's any other, uh, but also if you purchased a packet um, and you haven't downloaded it yet, because of the purchase, you wouldn't be able to get the, um, it'll still give you the, the old one, even if I was to update it. So just FYI. Um, nice. But are there any questions for me? Hopefully people are going to feel more confident and excited about uh, the whole process of creating your own chord melody. Um, it's really fun to do. And I hope that artist work students do a VE on this song. We'd love to see it be played and see you go through it and see your spin on it. If you aren't one of our artist work students, tag us on social media, go through the, go through the song and tag us. We always love getting to see people uh, playing the things that we've been teaching. So thank you guys so much. Um, everybody who's purchased a packet, we really, really appreciate it. Um, it allows us to keep these things free. And also we give out free packets every month. We are always giving out free packets to those that can't afford it. So those of you who purchase a scholar packet, that does allow us to uh, continue giving out those free packets. So we really, really appreciate that. And as soon as I get that video up, uh, video lesson up, I will email Scholar Packet folks so that you know the video is there for you. But the backing tracks are already there. So definitely take some time and check that out. Aw, PJ, I hope no one's lonesome tonight. Me too, me too. Um, and next up, March 16th, we're going to have our friend Neil Chin in the house. Uh, our retreat starts the next day on the 17th. So we've got him in coming in. He's going to do some finger style uh, with us, which should be a lot of fun. So we'll see you guys on March 16th, y'all. It's pretty exciting. So thank you guys so much for joining us today for Chord Melody. This is awesome. Craig, any last words from you?
Uh, someone was asking about some low G resources. Just, just rem you know, remember, mm -hmm. it's been you know scientifically proven that low G causes uh, arthritis. You know, mm -hmm. it just it just takes so much more pressure to hold down. And, what you know, just ever? <laughs> what ever? We love all the Gs. <laughs> we love them all. Um, but low G resources themselves, we're not really sure. I, I mean, mean, there's I would... a ton of books with like low G arrangements. Oh yeah, um, I'm like, there's the, the the great thing is that there's like half half <clears throat> out there. Like Jeff Peterson has oh, a yeah. bunch of stuff that's low G arrangement specific. Yes, go check out uh, ukulelecorner.com. Ukulele it's Corner. Yes. great. Or our even on YouTube, yeah. And even our online classes with Artist Works too. We have yeah. low G stuff. So there's lots of stuff out there. Um, you know, you can also look at, um, oh, uh, The Quiet American. Uh, Aaron and Nicole Keim, I know, have stuff. Um, and even if it's baritone, like, that's your linear tuning right there. So you can totally play some of the arrangements. You'll be in a different key, but, like, it's the same kind of stuff. So um, there are things out there. So definitely check them out. Again, Ukulele Corner, Artist Works With Us. Um, Aaron and Nicole Keim, and I'm sure there's dozens more that I'm not thinking of right now because I would say it's a 50-50 split with people who play high and people who play low. Neil Chin, I think his Etudes book is for low. Oh, yeah, true. All right? Because like, his, his workshop arrangement, actually, for um, March would probably be low G It's probably going to be low yeah. G, yeah. Which because, is fine. Because Which is that's great. what Neil plays, and yeah. the whole time you're going to hear Craig Rabbing about it. <laughs> so, um, but yes, but thank you guys for joining us live. It's yeah. always so much more fun to yes. do it live than pre recorded. So, I love it. So. Um, and I thank you for all the kind words. If there are things that you want to learn more about that we haven't covered yet, tell us, send us a note. Let us know if you have any other ukulele news that you'd like to share for next month. Let tell us us. know. Awesome. Um, but thank you for being such a fantastic part of the ukulele community. Yeah. And um, hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Enjoy your weekend. Aloha, everybody.